please come together here. All right. Well, on behalf of Mike and Allie, I want to thank all of you for honoring them with your presence this afternoon as they're joined together in marriage. It's a stunning bride, stunning bridal party, beautiful view. And yet, isn't this just weird? <laughs> but uh, this is a beautiful moment here that we get to take part in. And the Bible says something very profound. It's one of my favorite verses in Jeremiah 29, 11. Some of you know it, maybe not, but I like this rendering of this scripture. He, he says, I know what I'm doing and I have it all planned out. God says, I have plans to take care of you, not abandon you, and plans to give you the future that you hope for. And what I love about that is it tells me that while many of us believe in kismet or, or luck or chance, this tells me that this day did not come about by chance. Uh, even bef before time began, you two were destined to be together. That's the way uh, God says it. And uh, now, of course, you both took very different paths to come to this point in time, but God knew what he was doing, and the both of you were destined to come together and meet here today. Now, most of us love a very good uh, fairy tale romance where a very dashing, handsome, stunning, uh, you know, maybe you five foot ten or something like maybe. So anyway, uh, Prince uh, he comes and he rescues this beautiful, stunning, gorgeous princess, and they face seemingly insurmountable odds in order to come and be together. And we know that um, in most all of those stories, and she got her handsome, brave prince, and he scores this hot. You know, rich princess, you know, they've got money and good looks and a beautiful castle and a pet unicorn. You'd think that, yeah, that would, of course, be nothing more or nothing less than, excuse me, a happily ever after. We think that. But of course, we know, most of us, that real love, real marriage is just not like that. That's why they call those fairy tales. The problem with fairy tales is they don't tell you what happens after they get married and they have kids and, and you know they leave the part out where, where Prince Charming finds out the hard way that Snow White has daddy issues. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Snow White. <laughs> and all, or that Prince Charming likes to play video games all night. And, you know, so uh, in other words, they don't tell you that happily ever after is a lot of hard work and that's because in real life, the wedding, this moment, isn't the end of the story. Um, it's really just the beginning. And that's because marriage is far more than this one beautiful moment where two people come together and they make vows to one another and then they seal it with a ring and a kiss. Marriage, rather, is a series of intentional acts of love and self-sacrifice made every day for the rest of their lives. That is what makes the happily ever after that we all wish for. And the quality of any marriage is going to be determined by the couple's willingness to do those things, to love each other selflessly and unconditionally, serving one another sacrificially. And they choose to do that each day by being open and honest with one another when they've done something dumb, intentionally or unintentionally. The first one to set aside their pride and their stubbornness and be, be the first to apologize when they get in an argument, to be quick to forgive and not to let the sun go down on their anger. and. Yeah, I believe, uh, because I happen to get to know the couple, and I know Allie more than Mike, but I still, I'm getting to know you, and I know you're a good guy. But I believe that these two really do have what it takes to make their marriage a healthy, long-lasting one. And it's not just because I really do believe that they love each other unconditionally, but because I know that they are trying to model their lives as best as possible um, to love one another as Jesus loved. Um, now, I know there's varying degrees of faith here, but I think most people would agree that Jesus was a, a good man and he loved sacrificially. He cared for those who were disenfranchised. He demonstrated compassion and kindness and patience. All of those things are who Jesus was. And as we model our lives after him, well, I believe that that love as we come to know it overflows onto one another. That's why in the Bible it says we know what real love is. Why? Well, because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for each other. And that's really what marriage is at the end of the day. 
is loving one another selflessly like that. And I'm confident that as these two remain committed to growing together in their faith in God and serving one another in love, that they will experience a long and healthy marriage together. And so I'm going to just read this prayer and then we'll get on to the business of vows. But this is my prayer for you too. I've prayed it for you before, but I'm going to pray it again. (laughs) But it's from Ephesians. It's chapter 3, verse 16 through 19. It says this. This is the prayer. And this is the Apostle Paul. He says, I pray that from God's glorious, unlimited resources, that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And then Jesus will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. And your roots will grow down into God's love and they'll keep you strong. So may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide and how long, how high and how deep his love is for us. May you experience the love of Jesus, though it's too great to fully understand, but as you do, you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And as I said, as those roots grow deep down into him, you are sure to flourish in this union of marriage that you're entering into. So, At this time, Mike and Ali, they're going to exchange vows. They chose to do this by writing them themselves instead of just repeating after me. So I think this is beautiful. We're going to go ahead and start with Mike, and he will share his vows with Ali. I'd seek you, Ali, Allison Marie, as my wife, my friend, my rock, my love, my support for all the things that will come our way. I take to have you to hold, to grow with, as I know in my heart you are my one true love and I will love you unconditionally. I remember when we first met 11 so years ago, Chris Kane introducing us in Northwest (laughs) Portland. Uh, Even though we parted that ways after that first summer, you still left a mark in my heart, you know, and we're we're here today. Um, The years went by, but you sent me a hey boy, hey message, and uh, (laughs) What we've gone through, and, and I, I've never seen a woman express so much grace as these past few months, dealing all, with everything, the way you've approached our relationships, this wedding today, and our friends. I can still see you crossing the street the first time we had our second first date at the Nobelrat. I still remember those flutters that I had. Um, the, t- the long drives up and down I-5, it finally took me to get down here. <laughs> Probably longer than you wanted it to take, but here, but it's also a testament of your love for me and what you're willing to do for me and for us to, to do whatever it takes. So I remember the first time telling you I love you, driving home from your parents' house and just seeing the amount of love your family has and the love that you had for them. And I took your hand and just told you that I loved you. And I think you paused and you didn't know what to say. <laughs> but this I can promise you. I promise to always love you because at the end of the day, it's family. It's and love, that's all that matters. I promise to always be a pillar of support that we can lean into when the times are hard, challenging, or when you need someone just to hold you. No matter how bright and sunny, cloudy or rainy the days may be, I'll always be next to you. I'll always love you unconditionally through and through. I promise to work together for us because I know that committing ourselves to, an, to each other, there's really nothing we can't do. I promise to keep God in the center and love as a focus as we grow. I promise to find new ways to love you, to add laughter to your life, and to give you all the love that I know how to give. As I look to our future, I'm excited to see what's in store, whether it's in Selwood or somewhere else in Portland, the family that we grow, our future home. I'll always look back at today and these past couple months as probably one of the more trying times, maybe, I don't know. (laughs) But we're here, we did it together, and I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful that you have my heart, my whole heart, and I, I'm so excited for you to be my wife yesterday and today and tomorrow and, and forever. So I love you, babe. I take you, Michael Lauren Gerg, to be my husband. You are my best friend, my partner, and biggest supporter, and my one true love. I take you to have and to hold and to grow alongside with. Mike, you are my best friend, my partner, my biggest supporter, my love. You truly get me. You are so very patient, compassionate, and romantic. You encourage me and continue to grow, to help me grow to my full potential and areas to be my best self. Family is a top priority for you, especially making sure Zoe and I are well taken care of. <laughs> I've never felt so much perpetual and unconditional love for anyone than I do for you. You put others' needs above your own. You make me laugh and smile harder than I ever have. 
You make each day fun and exciting. You are more goofy and full of energy than any introvert that I know. I can truly be myself. No makeup, crazy hair, stressed. And you love me just the same, if not more. You balance and complete me. You have loved me and continue to love me through all the happy, the great, the tough, and hard times we have endured. And our love has just grown stronger and more steadfast. I praise and thank God that he blessed the broken road that led me straight to you and brought such a wonderful, kind-hearted, respectful, and perfect gentleman and hunk of cuteness into my life. <laughs> I love our love and love you with all my heart. You are my person and the one whom my soul loves. My promise is to you. I promise to always love you, unconditionally love you, through the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, and everything in between. I promise to always support you, encourage you, and stand up for you and be by your side. I promise to make you and us a priority always because we are a team and better and stronger together. I promise to always strive to be the best partner and wife you deserve. I promise to always respect you, your needs, wants, opinions, and thoughts. I promise to keep our marriage sacred and God at the center. I promise to continue to date you as my spouse and keep that fire of our love strong. Looking to the future, I love you, Michael Garrig, and cannot wait to start our forever together. I choose you and will always choose you. I choose you today, tomorrow, and always. I'm excited for what the future holds for us, and I know we will continue to work to be the best person for each other. We are better and stronger together, as a team, as family. With you by my side, we can weather any storm, trial or tribulation, have the sweetest and joyful of times, and the best laughs. Together with you is my favorite place to be. Lastly, I cannot wait and so ready to finally call you my husband again. <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. All right. Well, you know that you've made and you can take each other's hands. <laughs> Some um, very important decision in choosing to marry each other today. And you're entering into a very sacred covenant before God and your family and your friends. Um, and you're committing yourselves to some very special and important promises. And I want you to just repeat after me, Mike, on this. Do you understand and do you accept the responsibility and promise to do your best each day to create a loving, healthy, and happy home for Ali? If so, say, I do. I do. And Ali, the same thing. Do you understand this covenant that you're entering into and do you promise to do your very best every day to create a healthy and happy home for Mike and Zoe? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do. All right, well, rings have become this uh, symbol of an unbroken circle of love, and they represent this commitment to love one, each other, one another for the rest of their lives. And so at this time, they're going to exchange rings, and we're going to start first with you, Mike, putting Allie's ring on her finger. So wonderful. Thank you. It's just hot. It's sweat is swollen. <laughs> Who said that? So you said COVID weight? Hey, you didn't say that. I'm just kidding. Nobody said that. Well, I did now. So you can kick me later. All right. Uh, uh, Mike, repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I give you this ring <laughs> as a symbol of my love. <laughs> I promise to be faithful. I promise to be faithful. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. That's good. That's good. <laughs> you did it right. It's, it's me. All right. And now uh, you're going to... Ali, it's his turn. Okay. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I promise to be... Uh, I promise to be faithful. I promise to be faithful. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Well, at this time, we're going to do something that's very unique and special. In fact, I've done a lot of wedding ceremonies, and this is the first time I've ever seen this particular component performed, and it's something called the mantilla. So I'm going to d d read to you what this is, and then we'll continue on with this. So the mantilla, and it's over here in this box, it's a long lace veil that's used in traditional Spanish wedding ceremonies, and it's to symbolize the uniting of the two into one. The lace symbolizes the beauty of marriage, the length is for warmth 
and to embrace the couple who love each other and promise to always be together. The mantilla is also delicate, representing the fragility of a relationship. This mantilla in particular has been at every family wedding since the 1960s when Martha's uncle Daniel and Aunt Gladys brought it from Spain. Ali's mom and dad, Martha and Jim, had it at their wedding in 1981. So at this time, we're going to come on up and we're going to perform this ceremony and then they will speak a blessing. So. Do you want to read the blessing or would you like me to no, do it? Okay. Okay. I'm going to read this blessing. Okay, here's the blessing. May you always put each other first and seek your love's greatest good. May your lives be filled with joy and hope that can't be understood. May you prosper in your, in your health, in your wealth, your grace and mercy too. May all that you ever dare to dream be realized by both of you. Excellent. Thank you. Mike and Allie, your happily ever after begins today. But as I said earlier, the quality of your marriage will be determined by your willingness to love one another selflessly and unconditionally. And the wonderful plan that God has for you is going to become a reality one step at a time as you look to him for guidance, patience, wisdom, and a huge amount of grace that you're going to require as you move through this time together, your, your time on earth together as husband and wife. And I trust that as you continue to remain rooted in God's love, your love story will have the happily ever after that you all wish for. Now, of course, there's always one important bit of business that always plays an important part in any storybook romance, which is true love's kiss. But unfortunately, because of social distancing, Mike will have to wait until... <laughs> No. No. Um, Mike and Allie, I now have the honor of being the first to announce you to be husband and wife again. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Gehrig.